Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to On the Flip Side. And the first Monday of every month, it is mindset. And I love mindset because it's just so important. Once you really get into real estate, you just don't realize the impact, especially as you grow, how important it is to have that amazing mindset. And so I want to thank Kaylee Kennedy for coming on. She is a mindset coach. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to chat today. Awesome. Yeah. And so today's topic, I think, is very important because a lot of us have been going through tons of difficulties with all the economic changes. And I just think I want to help you guys like with a pick me up, help everyone just be able to get through what's going on in a mindset sense. So do you want to just start off with something like that? Like a lot of people have been going through stresses and projects, projects going failing and um, maybe during the projects and they're just like struggling to get it to completion. Do you want to just start off with some motivational, some something oh. to just kind of get them going? <laughs> of course I do. I have so many things to say on this topic because um it's so easy and I'm, you know, I'm not letting you guys off the hook here, but I'm just saying it's so easy to fall into that, that trap, right? When, when you start, when things aren't going the way that you want them to go, it's like, you kind of, you go down with the spiral, right? But we don't want to, we want to climb back up. We want to climb back up and get out of that spiral and uh, of that, you know, those negative um, uh, thought patterns, right? And be able mm -hmm. to really like focus back in on our goals, so I would say, you know, when challenges are happening or, you know, results aren't happening the way that you want them to happen or things are falling through, or it's just like, you know, it, it just kind of, it's piling up. There's a couple of things. So the first thing I want to talk about today is, um, like, a I call it, I call it like a, a daily consciousness. It's like a daily reset, right? Um, the truth is we, if we keep bringing, old results into the present, we're going to just keep getting those old results. We're going to keep attracting them because that's what we're focused on. Right. Or so if you dwell on them, maybe you don't even move forward and yeah. you're just like, all you can do is think about it and then you get stuck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you just, you're, you know, you give up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's very common too. Uh, I had a mentor once tell me now I'm a mindset coach. I'm also in sales, right? Because if you, I'm not selling, I'm not coaching, right? So I had a mentor of mine tell me, and I want to share this with you because it's very, it's relevant to everything. Um, he said, don't bring last week's results into this week and don't bring yesterday's results into today. And that was, re that really impacted me because I used to be a person who would, I would bring those things over. Like if I had and I know this is different in your, um, your climate of what you're doing, but I think the example is very relevant. So I want to mm -hmm. share it. You know, if I have a goal of five sales a week and I made four last week, that doesn't mean I go for six this week. I go for five this week because every week is a new week. Every day is a new day. And when you keep bringing, or it's more like a dragging, it's not so much of a bringing because it's, it's like you're dragging, you know, the old results or the old failures or the you know, the doubts, because doubts can come with those failures. It's like you're dragging them like through the, the mud, right? And it's, it's just, it's heavy and it doesn't allow you to move forward. So how I like to, how I like to shift it and how I invite you to shift it is to look at any of those things that didn't go the way that you wanted them to go and say, okay, where did I lose control? How can I improve for next time? What lessons am I learning here? What can I be grateful for in this opportunity? Because those are all things that you can grow through that you can bring into your next, you know, your next deal or your next, you know, your next project. Because um, if you keep focusing on what went wrong, you're going to attract more of what goes wrong. But when you focus on, okay, like, oh, this went wrong, but this is the lesson I can learn. Then what you're actually doing is you're, you're moving through that, you're improving and you're focused on the areas that you know you want to improve. So in your mind, so you're already looking at, okay, how can I move through this so I can still achieve my goals, right? Because in any deal that you're doing, your goals are just as important as the overall goals for the projects, right? Your goals are very, very important. So always keeping those goals top of mind and always looking for how you can improve. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I like to say, you know, 1% better every day, right? So when you live in this kind of one day at a time consciousness, which is essentially what I'm talking about, um, you allow yourself to grow through what you went through or, you know, the challenges that you experienced. And it's, I'm not saying it's going to be easy because oftentimes we have to look in the mirror because some of those, those things, yes, you know, you can blame, there's lots of things that, that we can blame, but there are also ways where we can take responsibility. And when we take responsibility, we actually empower ourselves and we allow ourselves to move on and move through it and still, you know, keep our goals top of mind and moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So, um, I know with real estate, like there's been a ton of changes, right? A ton of changes in in the climate, a ton of changes in, um, just you were saying the economy, the market, all of those things, but it's also a choice what you want to focus on. So you can focus on what's going on in the world, or you can focus on your goals because, you know, if you look out there, there's still people who are crushing it, even in this climate. So mm-hmm. why not you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, great points. And I just wanted to go back to, because you put so many good points, I kind of want to reiterate, because one of them is the questions, asking yourself questions. I feel like that's something I've started to, or I mean, I've been doing now for a while, but I learned to be so impactful. I never understood not only asking the questions, but like writing the questions down and answering them on paper, because I feel like once you put it there, you even re- you analyze it and you tell yourself, I, I would notice sometimes I tell myself, I say something and I notice it's a little superficial and I'm like, that's not really the answer. I, I know there's something deeper and you kind of just go through it and you kind of analyze yourself that way. So I just wanted to reiterate that. And the other part of the good things that came out of it. Um, but like not only the learning experience, but there are also even just good things that have come out of it, but we get stuck in the negative parts of it, which I always thought that I just wanted to reiterate that part too, because that is a good point. That's something actually I noticed even in myself that I do is that it's funny, I'll get down on something and I'll just be like going all full, full force negativity. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, but you know, like this actually did go pretty well. Oh, this actually. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, there's not that bad. It's not that bad or it's bad. Like maybe like now economy, it is bad, but I feel like those positives, you're like, it kind of pumps you up again. I feel like you're like, okay, you know, like, like, yes, the bad came out of it. And now I've written down what the learning experiences were from it. So kind of, you now feel like, okay, now I'm more equipped for the next one too. So I just wanted to reiterate those because I thought those were just so powerful and important and yeah, that you said that. There's a quote, and I'm going to botch it because I don't have it memorized. But essentially, the quote is harvest the good, forget the rest. Mm-hmm. Right. So, when anything happens in our lives, we have a choice of how we want to look at it. Right. And when you ask yourself questions, you take the lessons, you take, you know, the wins. Like, there's a win in every, you can find a win in every situation. Mm-hmm. When you focus on that, you can move th- forward. And really, it's like, there's a lot of forgiveness, I think too, that we need to, you know, do on ourselves when things aren't going the way that we want to go. We need to like, kind of let it go. Right. Cause we can tend to, if we continue to like blame ourselves or we stay in that like negative vibration, um, we're just going to keep attracting on that level. And we, what, what it's really important and what Diana is sharing with you, what that actually is helping her do is raise her vibration to not go down with the, the result or not go down with, with the outcome that wasn't the outcome that she expected. Um, but she went and found those lessons and was able to raise her vibration back up so that she can keep moving towards her goals. And then, you know, new opportunities are going to present herself too, because you're not staying in that kind of like poor me mentality. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Or the blame game. Pardon? The blame. Or the blame game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Catching yourself in those things are also, I feel like that in itself is a task. Just realize what you're saying and and is it an excuse? Is it blaming someone else? You know, like going through the list of like, does this actually, am I putting negativity into me or is it actually what I'm saying helpful to myself? Yeah. And so getting into um, her talking about like, because some other things that, again, I was um, telling you before this started, how I was speaking to someone and um, and I feel that another thing in the real estate communities is that 
everything is go, 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 especially when you're in the community, you're seeing all the, everything going on. I think now we are seeing people talk about the problems and things It is coming a little bit more, but that go, go mentality is still there. And I just wanted to get your input on um, the breaks part, being able to take breaks. And even, I think even in the middle of a project, this is important because you do spare, spiral into the negativity. And sometimes I feel like you do need to step back to assess and make better decisions going forward. Because I feel like when you're in there, I feel like the blinders are in and you can't really see because you're just in the trenches. Yeah. Any, any tips you'd like to give in that sense on how they can uh, improve that um, just to keep moving forward and not give up? Yeah. Um, there is a magic called slowing down to speed up. And what this essentially is, is allowing yourself to kind of step back, just like Diana said, step back from something and to basically fill your own cup or refill. So um, an example, um, a mentor that I, that I work with, I was sharing something. I said, you know, I'm just, I was, I was tired. And he's like, well, then just go have a nap. And I was like, well, duh. Like just, okay. Looked at my calendar. It's like, Hey, I actually have, you know, this was just two hours of busy time. Like I can do that later. I'm going to go have a nap. And I did. And my energy was reset. And I know it's like, it's such a weird thing, but we, you know, there's the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. Right. So when we're constantly like in the trenches or go, 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 or do, 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 and you're feeling yourself drain, um, you need to refill, you need to refuel. And the thing is, you know, some people will think, oh, that's, but, but time is of the essence. Well, the truth is when you're operating at your best, you're also more efficient, your better use of your time. Mm -hmm. So for me now, if I notice I get really caught up in the doing and I'm feeling less inspired and more mechanical, which I don't, if, if you know what I mean, like kind of like going with the flow, like feeling like I'm working from my goal. So that's why having a goal is so important, like working from your goal, focusing on your goal. And if I feel like I'm, I'm kind of trudging towards it, that's when I know I actually need to, to do something for myself to, to fill back up. I used to have to do stuff like all the time. And now it's, it's very rare that I actually get into that, but that it was a practice a practice of learning to slow down. And now I know how to work more in the flow. So we all need to slow down a bit. We all need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and having those rests and taking that time. And if like, if you're kind of feeling like you're spinning and you're in the trenches and you're just like doing and, and nothing's work, especially if nothing's working, that's when you know you need to take a break. Because the truth is, if you keep going the way you're going, you're going to just be spending a lot of time and it's not going to be productive time. But if you just take that, even like I, uh, you know, one of my favorite things to do is just take like a 15 minute walk. You go outside, you take a, like a 15 minute walk and you get back to work. And that energy reset is huge. And my productivity goes up and I know it will for you too. So there is this magic in slowing down to speed up to really, um, and remembering why you're doing these things, right? Like, so slowing down to speed up, Connecting back with your goal, your purpose, um, your why is so, so important. Like I was saying before, your goal is just as important on these, um, you know, in these, these, these events. So like you got to reconnect with that. And sometimes you have to reconnect and recommit to it like multiple times a day, especially if things aren't going right. It's like, okay, remember why I'm doing this, you know, remember why I'm doing this. And um, and okay, I'm, I got to take a little break and, and just reset and go after it again. And you'll be, you'll be shocked. Cause I know for me, it's like, I work a lot. I actually, this is when I say working smarter, this is what I, I like, this is exactly what working smarter is because you're working more efficiently. You're working more in a, in alignment with what you want, um, in harmony with universal law, which I'm not going to get into today, but that's something too. And you just, you attract and you, your results improve. Mm -hmm. So it's like you actually work, you work less, but sometimes it's hard to know when you need to take those step backs and refill. And it's just a practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just like that, just what you're saying, like giving yourself the permission, because again, I think when you're in it, you feel like the only thing you can pay attention to is the problem and you're like I'll do it later I'll do it later like I'm so tired I'll take care of that later you know I it's everything is always later because you just blinders are on 
and you're like all you care about is the problem but mm-hmm. sometimes that like whatever resting is for me too I feel like naps are definitely a thing for me I'm like I'm gonna go hibernate for a little bit and it's usually like two hours like I'm like I'm done yeah <laughs> and then go into hibernation or what you're saying actually walking I'm the same I usually in the day I notice for some reason 2 30 is like my breakdown time where it's just like but the thing is I can't if I sleep at that time I'm not gonna sleep at night and then it's just like I throw off like everything and so what you were saying about walking usually 2 30 is like my walk time because it's also interesting because it's not I started realizing I thought it was like tired I'm sleepy but I think it's maybe more of a burnout or something of the day because the walking actually rejuvenates me so it's not actually I'm sleepy tired or something it's more like I think my body's just telling me stop you know yeah. <laughs> two yeah. o'clock seems to be my stop and I'm just like okay yeah. time to go take the dog for a walk <laughs> it's interesting because so to charge electronics we plug them in but to charge ourselves we actually need to unplug so mm-hmm. exactly what you're saying that walk is essentially you refilling your battery. You mm-hmm. you plugging in your battery and and you know re- refueling or whatever. Um, so it's very it's very interesting because you know you can you know you, you're busy all day. You know we do our batteries just like our technology, right? Our batteries go down, but it's a different way to 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 recharge for us, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess getting to know what it is for us because. Because like that, for example, for me, napping, I can't really do during the day, unless if it's stressful, yeah. because then I feel like I can sleep for 20 hours in the day and I still can sleep more, you know, <laughs> but if it's not stressful stuff, I feel like you, it's like testing yourself like yeah. that. And one day I was just all of a sudden, I think it was just because I would do nothing. That was my problem. You know, mm-hmm. I would, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so tired. And I would do nothing or like watch tv but it's not as if it made me feel any better mm-hmm. and then one and then one day uh, I was just so busy during the day I couldn't because normally I take my dog out for a walk much earlier usually around like 11 or even at that time actually I think it was like seven in the morning now mm-hmm. I do it like that in the middle of the day and and so I was like okay I gotta go take him for a walk and then I just coming back I was just like oh my god I felt like I felt like I took a proper nap or something I was very shocked by that and then from then I was I that's when like that I said I used to take my dog out for walks at seven in the morning then I was just like you know what he's gonna be my midday break and um and because it's just it just like that it was like my battery got charged again And it really helped me out. So I feel like it's also just, I guess, testing what it is that works for you. Because like that, sometimes it's not really about the nap. Even though you feel tired, you think it's a nap. Sometimes it's something else too. Yeah. So it's uh, like, I feel like the experimenting is kind of nice yeah. to just be like, what what do I enjoy? Or doing yeah. what you enjoy. Yeah, I even like doing, like I do mini visualizations throughout the day. So I'll just take like five minutes every once in a while. And I'll just like, like visualize or meditate you know Mm -hmm. um kind of and reconnect to my goal reconnect to my self-image the person Mm -hmm. who you know I need to be to achieve my goal and I find that that refills me too right because it's Mm -hmm. just um, you're right that does pump you up when you're thinking about your goal and or why you're doing what you're doing I feel like both those things things actually also kind of just give you that oh let me get back to it you know it kind of re-energizes you yeah the purpose, um, purpose and goals, goals are so important, right? Like, especially when you, especially when circumstances happen, whether it's life, whether it's, uh, interest rates, like whatever it is, like, those are things that are outside of your control. The only thing you can control is how you respond to it. Right. So you're thinking, and when it comes to, to goals and why you're doing what you're doing, that can re-energize you. And that can also help you move through whatever is going on around you. As Diana knows I've had some pretty intense life circumstances happen in my family in the past six months, but not once have I ever stayed in that energy because I go back to, to my why and my goal. And it's so, so, so key. Um, is it, Diana, I should have asked you this before. Is it okay if I talk about our retreat on Friday? And uh, yeah, but we can, if it's okay, we okay. leave it to the end. But yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. I was just as I was talking about goals and purpose, I was like, wait a second, I actually mm-hmm. might have something that can, can help but people. So, so yeah. if you wait till the end, everyone, yeah. listen to the end, <laughs> you'll get to hear about Kelly's retreats because uh, it is true. Goals and purpose, you do start realizing 
how important it is because and what I what have I I've also noticed is for example for me I felt like I've always known my purpose I've been pretty good with the goal but I was actually didn't realize to say what desire was so it's really nice to actually know properly everything because usually there's something in there that's missing that is the reason why for example you're not moving forward like let's say in real estate you don't you're not moving forward you don't feel motivated by it you don't know why it is you probably don't have one of those three I feel usually you're missing one of those three to give you that like it's like when you know that especially like you said when you kind of think about it if you're having it down or you go back to it it's like all of a sudden you you just get this burst of energy that comes out because it just reminds you that oh yeah I'm doing I'm doing real estate because I want more freedom of time or money or I need this for my family or I want to grow bigger to do these things or whatever it is it just starts kind of feeling your energy and pumping you up and so those things I feel like just kind of like make you but yeah you just get that energy rush it's a nice way to get an energy rush (laughs) well the truth is like life is always going to be happening around us right like things are things are always going to be changing beyond our control and really in order to like this is where persistence comes in too right in order to continue to move through whatever it is that's going on that's outside of you um, you have to have that goal and that purpose and, and the desire, like really, you know, what a goal is, a goal is just an idea. And as soon as that idea, you move that idea into your subconscious mind, it becomes a desire, right? And the desire is what moves you. So being able to connect to that goal, remembering like, um, you know, okay, this, you know, this project didn't go the way I want it to go but that's okay because I still know, I know what I'm going after. I know why I'm doing this. Um, and there's going to be more, more opportunities for me. And if, when I shift my response to what happened and start looking at what can I learn from this? How can I improve? Where did I lose control? You know, what can I do better next time? Like, you're just going to continue to get better and better and better. And then you, you actually are moving towards your goals. Even when it feels like, things, when things are falling apart and it feels like you might not be moving there, you still are because you, you have that place to go. You, you know, you have that, 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 that vision, right. And, um, if it was, if it was easy, everyone would have the things that they want, but the truth is it's simple, but it's not always easy, but it's those who persist and those who, um, you know, who really shift their mindset on what they're focusing on and responding and focusing on their goal and not allowing, you know, the bank to tell me what I can and can't do this year. Like none of that stuff really does matter unless you, unless that's what you're focusing on. It's just these like, it's, and it's all mental shifts, mm-hmm. right? And, and it's, it's just as easy to think of what's going on going wrong as it is to think of what's going right. So when you just, and you can't really think both at the same time. So when you just learn to make those internal shifts, everything can change for you. 100%. And, and I think it's also just great. Um, the, or I wanted to just, uh, cause I think we, we spoke about it before, but I wanted to go back a little deeper on it was the, um, you know, like we're talking about so much positive mentality, which is, is very important. But even I think a lot of people's downfalls was that they went into next level of positivity and forgot about the rational side of things. And you and a lot of I know that a lot of people have gone into this. Oh, you know, like if I just think positive, you just go through every, you'll be able to go through everything. And I just kind of want to if you want to talk a little bit about that, it, like the importance of that balance between the two and just whatever you'd like to share about it. Cause I do know a lot of people get into mindset and then all of a sudden you just things like you start blissing out kind of a thing. And then you think that, Oh, if I'm just the most positive person in the world, nothing can go yeah. wrong. And then uh, we've seen in our industry, men, there's been quite a few people just hit like yeah. terrible rock bottom. So I would love to hear your point of view on that nice balance yeah. that you can do. Yeah. So, um, I was at an in-person event back in October and, uh, something was shared there and it really, really spoke to me and it really helped me understand 
because you can bliss out. I, li- I like that. I haven't, I haven't heard that before. You can bliss out or you're like, you know, you, um, you get into this kind of like, you become like a little bit like off with the fairies or like delusional, right? Mm-hmm. It's okay to have a little bit of delusion. Like you want to be a little bit delusional, but not, <laughs> not off with the fairies delusional. And what it was is like, you always have to make sure you have one toe on the ground, right? Like always be, you know, be where, know where you're going, but be where you are. And having that, like knowing that there's, you're always going to have to take action. Like, you know, it's, it's action reaction. That's how you get results. Like you, you know, you can be positive, but stuff's still going to happen. And it just really, what that really means is you just shift your perception on things that are going on around you. Um, that doesn't mean like I, you know, I have a pos- positive mental attitude most of the time, but there is still things that I, I still am shifting my perception through but it's like, I can catch it. You know, I can catch it. It doesn't mean, you know, having a positive attitude or positive mindset all the time that nothing's going to go wrong. So that's not true. It's never true. Like something always is going to happen, but you shift. It's like, okay, how, what is this happening? If this is happening for me, what are the lessons? Right. Um, I've asked, I've had to ask myself that a lot, a lot of times over the past six months. And, um, you know, and it's, it's like, it always comes, even on the hard times, it always comes back. It always comes back to the goal. It always comes back to, you know, my driving force, my purpose, why it is I'm doing what I'm doing and, and, you know, and making those perception shifts, like being able to say, okay, like, what is the good here? Right. Like, what is the good here? There, there, there's always something good. It's the law of polarity, right? Like if there's a bad, there is a good, if it's hot, there's cold, right? Like there's, there's always those opposites. So when things are bad, there is a good side to it. You just need to look at what that is, right? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And a lot lot of times it's going to be really hard because a lot of the times it's going to be taking responsibility or, um, or even just like, uh, like forgiveness, like forgiveness for if someone wronged you, or if you made a mistake or whatever, like those aren't necessarily always like easy things, but they're necessary things to move on. Right. Mm -hmm. So being positive doesn't mean you're going to be like, you know, floating through the sky all the time, but you have to have that toe on the ground. You have to kind of just be able to, to ask yourself those questions and see what, what, like, how is this happening for me? Right. How is this happening for me? What can I take from this? How can I grow through this? Yeah. How can I adjust? I think like that, like for a lot of us real estate investors, and I just kind of want to flip it on the, so that people understand on the real estate side, like what, what we're basically talking about is that, you know, like, for example, like that, which is actually, I mean, I feel like something I'm trying to work through is that, you know, you're looking at the news to try to know what's going on so you can make the right decisions, right? You're talking, let's say right now, talking to a lot of mortgage brokers because I feel like mortgages are the things that are just evolving and changing at the time and trying to keep up with all that stuff and and doing your analysis and with all the data you're collecting on like what's happening in the market with all the houses and everything and, and seeing what's going on, kind of making your predictions because usually with the way the market works, at least in real estate, if we're doing the research right now and you're seeing, you kind of do, you can foresee actually like, the next three months what's happening you do kind of you do we do get that if you're actually like paying attention to the news and seeing what's going on and just kind of like and analyzing everywhere like what are the houses doing right now like how are the sales going you know what is it selling out what are the mortgage brokers doing uh, um, what's the economy doing you're actually able to forecast what happens in the next three months and um, and that's another thing, right? Because I think what happened with a lot of people last year is they were so go, 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 paying attention to their properties or just buying, 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 but they forgot the part of like what's happening in the economy and just always adjusting to make sure what's going on. Because mm-hmm. one of the things I can say that I noticed was the difference with, for example, with the people that were keeping on track and knowing what was going on, I noticed a trend that everything went from one year term mortgages or for on privates. So everyone was into those big, big projects, um, you know, like uh, big flips or big burrs. And then last year it completely switched to 
I'm just doing like a one or two month and then refine uh, one or two month uh, renovation, refinancing or selling. It was very quick turnaround types mm -hmm. of projects because these people saw what was happening and they were like, yeah, things are going to happen in September. Later on in the year, we're seeing some strange things where the other ones are ones that weren't paying attention that was happening and probably still doing bigger projects, doing big developments and and like that, like, it's like, you have to be aware of everything that's going on. So you can make the right decisions for you. And like that, like you were saying, right, there's people who are successful out there. Like for me, I can say, I have not lost in a project throughout of last year, I haven't lost any, I didn't lose any money. And it's because I was doing both, you know, like, yes, I'm definitely trying to be positive and, and keep that thing. But I'm also putting that rationale in there. And just kind of keeping my mind um, like that, the rational and the positive mindset, kind of keeping that balance there. And the thing I was going to actually tell you that, I, that or when we spoke about it before too, was that I think the, the struggle with the positive mindset and looking at the economy is the part where you kind of do get sucked in and those fears do come in. And so I'd love to hear your point of view, because I know we talk about like neutralizing the mind. And that's something I'm very much working towards is learning how to not get. And I, this evolves even just your current projects that you're in and everything that's going on in your life. It's neutralizing that mind really helps to kind of help us move forward and probably think in more clear ways. So just I would love for you to talk to the audience more about that and how mm -hmm. we can help ourselves to neutralize it. I mean, even starting with what is neutralizing the mind mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting when you're saying, when you're talking there, the thing that popped into my mind was it's like, you want to stay informed, but also notice what you're focusing on. So you, like you stay informed because you, you, in, in your industry, you do have to have, you have to have your pulse on, on everything. Yeah. Right? Probably more than a toe. I feel like it's a whole foot. Yeah, more than a toe. Maybe it's a whole foot. Okay. For me, I have just one toe, but for you guys, you can have a whole foot, maybe like just touch down with the other foot just to keep your balance once in a while. Don't, don't go too crazy. Um, but it's, it's like, it's being informed, but it's noticing what you're focused on. So when I say like, when we talk about like neutralizing the mind, it's really like, it's like, you don't go up or down, you stay. So it's okay. So this is what's happening in the economy, but you're still neutral. You're still here. You don't drop with it. So it's like, this is where it's like, okay, this is what's going on. Okay. I'm going to go back to my goal, go back to my goal, go back to focusing on what it is that I want, um, focusing on how I can better myself, how I can continue to move towards those, those goals staying informed, but then it's like you, so if this is, you know, this is neutral, you know, this is what the economy is doing. You listen and then you come back up, right. Or you have a win even, and this goes both ways, right. Being neutral, like the wins can be just as deadly as the losses. Cause you can have a win or you can have a good month and then you drop because you don't neutralize. Right. So it's like, you. that's basically what's happening to me. Like yeah. that, like I've not, I haven't lost money on projects, Yeah, but I have lost, not lost, but I mean, like my income has dropped because now I don't have very many private lens out yeah. and, and that's like half my income right there. That's like almost not exactly half, but like a lot of money lost. And, and I think it's like that. I, I've started going yeah. up and down with it. Yeah. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, in. no, it's good. That's good. Cause <laughs> you want to like, so the winds are up here, the losses are up here and you stay here. So how do you do that? You do that through affirmation, through connecting to your goal, through developing faith, um, through just noticing when noticing your energy, like, are you okay? You know, there's a, maybe there's an announcement about rates or something. I honestly, I don't, I don't know what's going on <laughs> just to let you know, but I do know that there are things going on in the world. So I'm informed, <laughs> but, um, but like, you know, there's, there's an, another announcement about the rates you listen to it, you're like, okay, but then you go back up instead of saying like, oh, you know, you can ask yourself, how is this going to impact me? But then it's like, okay, then just move back to the goal, right? Like you don't stay there. Same thing with wins. You don't stay up here. You always have to come back to neutral. You have to come back to, to just kind of like, you know, you don't want the ups and downs, you know, the roller coaster results, as I like to call them, you really do like you just come here. So that's really what neutralizing is. Um, I also like to say, like when we were talking about kind of like that detaching from like last month's results or those mistakes, 
the only thing you should be attached to is your goal and your purpose and your why, right? You attach onto that and you just let go of the rest because it's all happening for you. There's a lesson in it. Like there, you know, every, if, if you have a goal and you turn that goal into a desire, you will have that goal, but you're going to have to go through and grow through some stuff to get it. Because if you didn't, you would have it already, right? So it's like, there's there's just that kind of, we call it like that gestation period, right? And when you are able to shift your perception on those negative things that happen, you're able to bring yourself back up to neutral, learn your lessons and you progress and you keep moving towards your goals. 100%. And so any tips to help people um, maybe bring that awareness if they're going there, they're doing their ups and downs? Because you're right, I feel like when you go up, then for sure there's a down, you know, and I feel like that, like things are went really well for me. And I was like, amazing, things are awesome. And I can't, I can't say my downs are as terrible as others because people are dealing with like major losses, but, but then all of a sudden I have no, no deals coming to me and it's probably because of my fears of the market. And, you know, I'm just thinking all deals are bad right now, but, and so I'm not even allowing the good deals to come Mm -hmm. in. I mean, now I feel like I'm starting to see things I'm trying to, like you said, neutralize, but like, what kind of uh, tips do you have for the viewers to help them bring that awareness and, and just uh, what they can do to, you know, help try to reduce it or yeah. Or bring that awareness to it. Yeah. Um, even shifting, like there's, um, like shifting a belief around consistency, like around that there has to be those ups and downs and really, um, creating a belief that, you know, you can consistent flow of the results, Mm -hmm. right? Like, um, the best tool that I can suggest is through affirmations, through, through auto suggestion, through just basically you're giving yourself a suggestion of, you know, I see consistent results, no matter what's going on around me. Right. Like it's, it's all a belief. Um, so really just building consistency into your paradigm and into your self-image is going to be really important with that. Um, and just noticing, like when you do have the ups and downs, it's like just asking your questions. Okay. Like where do I want to be? What does my neutral look like? It, again, it comes back to those questions, right? Um, but I know like with me, I have the word consistency in my goal. I have the word consistency throughout my self-image. I have the word consistency in my affirmations because that those are things that I want to see in my life. So it's just shifting my belief around consistency. Like, you know, we have like a belief is, okay, well, when you know, right after you go up, you have to go down. Well, what if right after you go up, you just go up higher? It's all a belief, right? Yeah. So it's and it's a great, uh, it is great. Um, like that's definitely, that's great advice because there are a lot of us that also, I, I just want to give examples because there's people that are like that never, let's say losing money. They're always, or, or losing whatever, like, like they're always, you see them stretching up, up, up. Mm-hmm. And you don't even, you don't realize that it, you think that, oh, maybe the reason why they keep on going up is, because of their belief system and they just don't believe that you know that they just believe that they can continue going up and same thing those people that are just like always in the struggle bad things are always happening to them I feel like you really notice it on that side I feel like when you talk to people it's like their language is always negative or uh they always say they can't they can't they can't and you're just like yeah you're right you can't (laughs) because like you have all this in your head telling yourself you can and you know you're like here's proof but apparently you can't see it I feel like with the negative side we do see a lot more of that happening I feel like it's hard to make because those people are much higher than us they're already going up 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 and it's like probably go to them and be like hey get to know their mindset because normally those people are the ones that are you know, like, oh, I don't see that doesn't, that to me doesn't happen. You know, I don't see this happening because their beliefs are so much more different, right? They believe that, um, I know what you're saying, right? They, they probably, they see, they see the positive side a lot more. They probably don't even realize the negatives. Um, Winning is a habit. Winning is a habit, right? Like it's really interesting, you know, it's, and it's just, and losing is a habit. Mm -hmm. So, and how do we change a habit through, through auto suggestion, through repetition of new ideas over time, through you're taking the actions of whatever it is yeah. that you're trying yeah. to change. The other thing too, is we have, a us humans have a terrible habit of 
saying, you know, if you see people who are constantly, oh, they must be lucky. No, no, no. There's no such thing as luck. We make, we all make our own luck. There's mm-hmm. no such thing as luck. But then we, by saying, oh, they must be lucky. It's like, you're letting yourself off the hook for actually getting what you want. Hundred percent. Like those two things are so important. It's like, you just build winning into your self-image. You just build winning into your paradigm, into your, um, into your being, right? Like I'm a winner. I go up, like I go up. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what's going on in the world around me. I know where I'm going and I always go there. And it's just, it's honestly, it's just a belief. So yeah, you see whatever is happening in the world's happening in the world, but you're still going to see people winning in every industry because that's what they're focused on. And that's in their, and every single person who's watching this can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Persist in your thinking first. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, uh, I feel like that's the name of the game for all of us. It's like, just to get started with yeah. what is going on in your head and start paying attention to that. And maybe even asking people, cause I actually, it was very interesting. I once had a career coach and they told me the way I would speak was for example, I use very, very like submissive type words and, and that's not good for a leader. Right. Mm-hmm. And they were saying that I used, um, like kind of like uh, words, like maybe things like where there's not stability and you don't Mm. give people the confidence where it was like internally, I had the confidence, but because of certain circumstances, I always felt like, uh, because being an engineer, this was my view back in the day, right? Being an engineer, being around a lot of men, I didn't want to hurt men's egos. So I kind of was like, you know, I'd prop them up if anything, right? So I'm like, I know who I am, (laughs) okay? And it's just very interesting how those kind of, oops, sorry, about, uh, those kind of things like, like that people. So even talking to someone to just see where you're, what words you're using. Cause like that career coach, I was, it was shocking to me because I thought I see myself as very confident, but I know that I was now showing that my public, the person yeah. that the people that people see me probably don't see the confidence that I actually have. And so I think like that questioning yourself, seeing what's going on in your head is so important. And like that, sometimes you also need the outside perspective too. I don't even think sometimes like you will always need it. They see more than we do, to be honest, ourselves. <laughs> yeah. If you want to get to the next level, you need a mentor, right? You need someone who's going to be pushing you because those beliefs, those habits, they're just, they're in you. And in order to, to win or get onto the, the luck trajectory, which isn't a thing, you have to shift your mindset. And the thing is, you're going to have these, these beliefs or these habits that are just going to continue to pull you down and um, you can choose to succumb to it or overcome it, but it is a lot easier to overcome it if you have a mentor and you're working with someone, because it's oh, just, yeah. you know, it's, it's too, e- it's too easy to, to, to just fall victim, right? It's too easy. And they can pick up, they can pick it out. Right? They're like, yeah. you're doing this. I mean, you do that to me all the time. You're doing this. And I'm like, oh, why am I doing that? <laughs> My, I think my favorite thing to say to people now is watch your thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, I have clients or team members message me all the time. So watch your thinking. Is that thought bringing you anything that you want? And it's like, oh, wait, no, it's not. And you just shift it. It's all internal shifts, but mm-hmm. it's like, but it's, you know, and it's, again, it's easy mm-hmm. or it's simple, but it's not easy because again, we have our habitual way of being right. So, you know, the, the, the blame game, like, you know, lots of people habitually blame or lots of people you know fall victim to what's going on around them it's a habit losing and it, yeah habit. it's such a habit they don't even realize it they're they yeah. think like they probably don't even realize that's a that's a, an excuse they're making like mm-hmm. I, I could tell that used to happen to me but before that I never knew I made excuses because mm-hmm. I wasn't a person that outwardly made excuses yeah. So I was just like, oh, I'm good. I, you know, yeah. I'm fine. But then um, when I was doing certain exercises and I was trying to like learn basically about the mind, <laughs> that's when I realized that, wow, I don't outwardly say a lot of excuses, yeah. but inwardly I, uh, I was just like, wow, I think I'm like, I top it with all the excuses that I do. And I was like, we need to start like cleaning up, clean the house, you know, <laughs> yeah. clean yeah, the, the mind cool. house. <laughs> yeah. Oh Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. It was so awesome to have you on, you know, the everyone, I hope everyone gets, I know they will get a lot of help out of this. We do need to, especially in the times that we're in, I feel like this is 
something that people need to listen to either as a help pick me up or to help them, you know, just even get through their day to day right now. If they're still struggling, it's very yeah. important. And would you like to share now your, um, the event that you yeah. have up soon? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I like, I should have mentioned it before, but as I was talking about goals and purpose, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> no um, so at, uh, Conway consulting, which, uh, Diana is a client and she's attended many of our clarity creation retreats. We are offering a retreat. Um, it is a ticketed event. It's on fr this Friday uh, from 10 to 4 EST. And what it is, is it's going to be just helping you dig deep down into clearly defining your purpose, your goals, and your self-image. So what that means is like, we talked a lot about how important goals are, especially when times are changing and there's things going on, or, going on around you, or, you know, projects are falling through all of those things. Your goals are so important. So to really have a clearly defined goal, a place to go um, to help you kind of refill your cup, energize you, um, attract those opportunities, right? Law of attraction happens. It's, you know, you don't get what you want, you get who you are. So we're going to really go into goal setting, um, developing your purpose statement. Again, your why, like what's your driving force? What's going to keep you going when times get hard? Because no matter what industry you're in, you're going to face hard times, but it's what is, how are you going to move through that? Right. And, and all of those two things are really going to help you, you know, shift your mindset, keep going, persist, achieve your goals. And then what we're going to end the day doing is helping you write out your self-image script. So um, what a self-image is, is it's essentially you're designing the person who's living the life that you desire. Because if you could have your goals as you are right now, you'd have them already. But there's, there is a growth period, like the person the person who has the business that I want is, you know, I'm still, you know, stepping into her every single day. I'll know when I'm there, when my results has changed. Same thing with Diana, right? She has a self-image she's stepping into every day. So we're going to help you design that um, so that you can live from that place and embody it. So it is a ticketed event. Um, I can post a link just under the live in your Facebook group. Is that okay? Yeah, that's and, perfect. Um, and anyone's welcome to join. And uh, and it also comes with some some coaching with with me. So uh, hopefully I'll get to meet some of you and, and help you move towards your goals. Awesome. Yeah, I love the Clarity Retreat. Uh, it definitely is exactly what the name is. Or <laughs> I feel like what it will do is like it'll confuse you first. And then it gives you clarity. You'll be, you go through and you'll be like, oh my God, I've never thought of any of these things. And now I need to start putting it together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, Kaylee, for Thank coming you. on. It's always so much fun to chat with you. And we'll see you next month again. Awesome. Thanks, Diana. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Kaylee.